Hello and thanks for watching. My name is Angel Villar and I am a network and security engineer at VMware. On this video I will show you how to take a trace of any VM that sits behind NSX and how to export it so that it can be analyzed from the admin desktop using typical network analyzing tools like Wireshark. NSX already includes multiple visibility tools that allow to do correlation between the physical and virtual networks including firewalls, uh, switches and routers that allow to do a live trace of any VM with just a few clicks so that we can get a glimpse of what's going on in the environment that show us the different flows between the different groups of systems or that shows us all the packets going through the NSX firewall. These tools are out of the scope for this demo. I covered them already in a previous video called Monitoring and Visibility that is available on my YouTube channel. The topology we are using is pretty simple. We have a ESXi host with a web VM that connects to a network created by NSX. And from the admin desktop, we are going to SSH into the NSX manager. We will enter a few commands that will start to take a trace into the web VM. The trace itself will be copied through the NSX control plane to the NSX manager. And then we will enter a few SCP commands that will allow the admin to retrieve the packet capture into his or her desktop to be further analyzed with Wireshark. For the record, and just in case resolution does not allow to see commands clearly later, this is the list of the ones I'm going to use during the demo. All of them will be entered on the NSX Manager CLI. So let's go for it. On the screen we can see the web 11 VM which is the one we are going to use to take the packet trace. We can see it has one network interface that is connected to a web VM created with NSX. The VM is located on ESXi01 and has an IP address of 172.16.10.11. And ESXi01 is part of Compute Cluster 01, Region A01, Comp 01. So for taking the trace for the VM, we need to first identify a few parameters. We need the VNIC ID, the VM ID and the host ID. The simplest way to get the VM ID is to go into the URL, go into the end of this URL and there we will find that our VM is VM-464. The same works for the host. So if we select the host and go into its summary page, then we go into the URL till the end and we can see our host is host-29. But let's go into the NSX Manager CLI and see how an admin would retrieve this information when he or she doesn't have access to vCenter. So first we are going to check the NSX version we are using. In this case we are using version 6.2.4. Next we list the clusters in our environment show cluster all and here we can see we have our compute one cluster with a cluster ID of domain dash C26 so let's find the details for this cluster show cluster domain dash C26 and we can see that our host one is part of this cluster ESXi01 with a host ID of host-29. So let's get, get the details for the host. Show host, host-29. And here we can get the list of VMs located on this host. In this case, we have web11, which is the VM we want to trace. And the VM ID is VM-464, as we had seen before. So now let's get the details for the VM. Show VM, VM-464. And with this command is where we find the VNIC ID, which is the parameter we need to take the trace for this VM. It's highlighted now. Okay, so we are fine. We have all the information we need. So we start enter commands to do the packet trace. First, we need to enter into the privilege mode of the NSX Manager CLI. For that, we enter the command enable and the corresponding password. So we are now in privilege mode and we start entering commands. So first command is debug packet capture. We have the option, so we are going to do host debug packet, packet capture host, host ID, in our case host-29. 
there are multiple options to do a packet trace. We are going to use BINIC, which is to take the trace from the VM interface. So we are going to use the BINIC ID here. So then we have to choose the direction of the trace so we can trace all the input packets or all the output packets. In our case, we are going to set two traces. First, we are going to set the input trace. Next, we are going to set the output trace, and then we will combine both. And finally, we can enter parameters. We are not using them for now, but parameters allow to filter the trace. So instead of getting all traffic into the VM, we can just get uh, traffic on port 22 or traffic from one specific IP address. With that, we are ready. We hit enter and the packet trace start. So we can see the syntax of the command. Finally, it's debug, packet capture, host, host ID, vinic, vinic ID, dir input parameters. And the system gives us back a session ID, which is for an input trace, which is set on a specific vinic ID on a specific host, and the trace is being stored on this specific file. So now we are going to repeat the process so instead for the input trace for the output trace. The same, we hit enter and the system returns another session ID which is different from the previous one. Now it's for an output trace in instead of an input trace but the VNIC ID and the host are exactly the same because we are tracing the same VM on the same interface. This second trace is stored in a different file. So now we have both packet traces working. Let's go to another VM to generate traffic into the VM we are monitoring. So this is a different VM. Let's check its IP address so that we can look for it later on the trace. So the source VM is 172.16.20.21. So from here we, we first ping into our VM 172.16.10.11. It works so we will see later two-way ICMP packets. Then we are going to generate some web requests. So we cancel the ping and move back to the browser. Again, 172.16.10.11. We repeat several times to generate some more traffic. And then let's try a specific port so that we can look for it later on the trace. So in this case, let's try port 986, sorry, 9876. It fails because there is no web server listening on that port, but we will see the packets on the trace. And finally, let's do an SSH from this VM to the VM we are monitoring, so SSH 172.16.10.11. We enter the password. Sorry, authentication failure. I enter the password again. And we are there. So we are have established an SSH from 172.16.20.11 to the VM we are monitoring. So we end the SSH session. And we can now go back into the NSX manager and stop the packet traces. So in our case for that we enter the command node debug packet capture session and we need to enter the session ID. So first we enter the session ID for the input trace and next we repeat the, so the, the session stops and next we repeat the command with the session ID for the output trace. So we delete the input session ID and we copy and paste the session ID for the output trace. Here we go. So the out, out, output trace is also stopped. At any time we can check the list of packet capture sessions with the command show packet capture sessions. It's important to add the S at the end because otherwise the command will fail. And we can see there are two sessions. One is on the input way but it's finished and the other one is on the output way but it's finished as well because we have stopped both. So the information is consistent with what we have done. NSX Manager allow us to check the trace from the CLI itself. For that we need to enter the command debug packet capture display session session ID. We copy the session ID for the input trace and parameters. We are not using parameters at this time 
and we can see all the packets with, with source IP the VM we are monitoring. So we can see ICMP packets with source 172, 16, 10, 11, HTTP packets as well, and if we scroll down we will see SSH packets. What this means is that the input keyword we were using to set the trace it has a network view. So these are packets that input the network, so packets with source IP, the VM we are monitoring, and if we want to take the trace uh, the, other the other way around, so packets that are received by the VM, we need to use the output keyword, because these are packets that are uh, leaving the network. Anyway, as we are tracing both ways, uh, we will see packets in both directions. Next, let's see how to use the parameters options we haven't used yet. So we repeat the same command, adding the keyword port 22 at the end, and we can see the display is now filtered and only shows SSH packets. So we can see a few samples here. And this is the use case for the parameters options. We can apply any TCP dump filter to filter a packet trace or, or to filter its display. So now we are going to check the IP address of the admin station, which is 192.178.111.10. Back to the NSX manager, we check the session IDs show packet capture sessions and here we have our both sessions so we enter the command to make the copy to the admin station so debug packet capture scp session session id first we copy the input trace so session session id and next we need to enter url user id at ip address of the management station colon slash as we are using the root folder of the SCP server. And this is important, since we are, since we are using SCP, the management station has to be running an SCP server. In my case, and for testing purposes, I'm using the free version of the SolarWinds one. We can check the root folder of the SCP server is initially empty. And back to the NSX manager, we hit enter so that the copy starts. We are presented the fingerprint of the admin station. We accept, we tell the system to continue, we enter the password for the admin user ID on the SCP server. And once we are done, the copy is finished. So if we go back to the SCP folder, we can see we have now a file with an ID that is exactly the same ID of the session we are copying. So we can check the session ID, it's exactly the same as the na name of this file. So we are going to repeat the operation now to the other to copy the other trace. So debug packet capture SCP session. We now use the other session ID. But then we will use the same credential. So URL admin at 192.168.111.10 colon slash. Again we are presenting the fingerprint, we accept. We enter the password, and the copy is done. So now in our in our admin station we have two files, one for each of the packet traces we have set from the NSX manager. So let's open the first one with Wireshark. The trace, the file loads, it takes a few seconds. And here we have half of our trace. So we click on file and merge, we will open the second file, and finally we have the complete view of the trace of the VM. We have both ways communication. So probably resolution won't allow to see the details, but we can see uh, the ICMP communication in both ways. We can see uh, the HTTP communication on port 80 first, and also we can see some duplicated, duplicated packets. In our case these are expected because uh, we are using a nested environment, but this would be a good uh, starting for a, for troubleshooting in a real product, productive environment. If we scroll down the trace, we will finally find the HTTP packets on port 9876, which was a failed communication, but we can see them here, the last packet of the screen now. If we scroll down, we will see more packets on this port, 9876, and we can use, for example, the filters on Wireshark to see only the SSH communication between our systems. So we filter TCP port 22, and on the display now we have only the SSH communication. And again, there are duplicated packets, but once more this is expected because it's a nested environment we are using for the demo. 
Let's now check the details of the SCP server to see the source IP of the file transfers. We can see packets were copied from 192.168.110.15. So now we will go back to NSX to check this is exactly the IP address of the NSX manager. So on vCenter we click on Network and Security and on the NSX screen we click on Installation, Management and once the information is loaded we can see the IP address of the NSX manager is exactly 192.178.111.15 which is the one on the SCP server. We check one with the other to confirm it's exactly the same IP address. So we are almost done. There is one last thing to do from the NSX manager which is to remove the information related to the sessions since we don't need them anymore. So for that we check once more our sessions, show packet capture sessions, here we have them both and now we enter the command dbook packet capture clear session session id so first we delete the input session and next we are going to remove the information related to the output packet trace dbook packet capture clear session and we use the other session id so now if we repeat the command show packet capture sessions we can see there are no sessions on the system and we are finally done. So this is the way an admin has to export a packet trace of any VM that runs on NSX with just entering a few commands on the NSX manager CLI. With that we have finished the demo. Just remember VMware is a key enabler for the digital era because with NSX it's provi it provides better security which is intrinsic to the infrastructure. It provides a streamlined operations and as we have just seen it's very easy to export a packet trace of any VM that runs on NSX, which is a complete platform for advanced networking and security. So again, thanks for watching, I hope you have enjoyed the demo, and remember you can always see this video and many other NSX demos on my YouTube channel. Thank you!